Welcome back to an exciting episode of St. Joe Bros. We've been gone for a while and we're back in action on none other than the solemnity of St. Joseph, husband of Mary, feast day. Super happy to be back with you guys. My Joe bro, Joe Rodriguez. How you doing, bro? I'm doing amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. You look like 10 years younger over there. I don't know what water you're drinking in Canada, eh? But it's doing you well. <laughs> well, I've been drinking a lot of that St. Joseph water from Cantignac, France. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, wow. Okay, so then you're going to have to like sell some of that stuff or something because uh, I think people are going to want to get it from your channel, the St. Joe water, because I yes, all I'm doing is getting gray hair over here. So I think I need to drink some of that stuff. Very is it good. called a J2O? <laughs> you know that's a clever marketing name i, yeah. I might just see you there you go there you go well cool man well hey guys we got a lot in store for you today uh the title of our show for saint joe bros today is feasting with saint joseph so as all good things start with prayer uh we thought we'd open up with uh the prayer today that you'll hear at mass if you go to mass on saint joseph's feast day today this is the opening prayer or the collect at mass so let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. St. Joseph, husband of Mary, pray for, pray for us. So go ahead and kick it off, buddy. Let the people watching know what they have in store for today. Hazel, okay, so given that it is the feast day of St. Joseph, I thought we'd go over the various feast days connected to him, um, the ones in our calendar, and some that were taken away from the calendar, as well as um, some local feasts that Mexico used to celebrate regarding St. Joseph. They have a, a lot of feast days, actually, more like folk feast days, I think you would call them. Um, after that, I figured we could talk about uh, the identity of Joseph's mother and father and any siblings he may have had. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Well, yeah, so as, uh, as you mentioned, Joe, today is the feast, the solemnity of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary. So I just got out of heaven, AKA mass, uh, like an hour ago, and it was so nice. Um, the things that caught my attention, and, and by the way, I, I think, you know, Lord willing, maybe uh, Joe and I could write a future book if no one else, uh, way better than us, which wouldn't be hard to find, but if no one else out there that has time and wants to write a book called Feasting with Joseph, I think a wonderful new book would be just that title, Feasting with Joseph. Uh, not just on his feast days, which Joe alluded to, but even on all the other feast days. So you can imagine, just for example, say the Assumption of Our Lady. How would St. Joseph view that feast day? Um, so imagine uh, you're just kind of having like a, a, a great big dinner with St. Joseph. And you're talking about that day's feast day. And you know, hey, Joseph, what, what do you think about this? Um, cause I don't know about you guys, but the more you think about St. Joseph, the more you see him everywhere. He starts to come out of the shadows. Let's dive into today, the feast of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary. That's the proper term that the church calls it. And, uh, this is perfect. We've kind of got this feast day, um, sandwiched or uh, benchmarked because, uh, for Joe over in Canada, it's the vigil of the feast. And for me over here in Asia, it is the feast day. So I'm on Tuesday and Joe is on Monday. So we've got all bases covered. So Joe, what comes to your mind when you think of this particular feast day? What comes to mind first is that it's been around for centuries. It was first inserted into the general calendar uh, for celebration in 1621. Um, it was by Pope Gregory the Fifteenth, so he kind of got the ball rolling when it came to the feast days. Um, although the date had already been informally dedicated to Saint Joseph um, as early as the tenth century, so it was more of like an oral tradition thing that you celebrate him on March nineteenth. But it took us a few more centuries to actually make it official. 
Um, the date, I mean, it's also Father's Day in some countries, March 19th, which uh, makes a lot of sense. Portugal, Spain, Italy. That's really interesting. I didn't know that because today's readings, um, I mean, two things it really focuses on, of course, I would say is husbandry and fatherhood. Um, in fact, if you look at, you know, the first reading, um, just, you know, right off the bat, um, one of the first things that catches my attention, at least, is it says, um, I will be a father to him. Now, this is coming from Second Samuel for today's first reading. Uh, so right off the bat, you see, I will be a father to him. Um, and then later, you know, in the gospel, it talks about how, you know, Joseph, it says, quote, Joseph, husband of Mary. Um, so, yeah, I think especially in our era, two things that really need help uh, for us guys is to help us to become better husbands and to become better fathers. Uh, and nobody better ever existed than St. Joseph to teach us how to be the best husband ever, and how to be the best father ever. Again, if we look at it in the bigger picture, you have a God, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, the all-powerful, you know, omnipotent, and yet he chose to serve one of his own creatures as a son to a father. You know, he chose to subject himself to one of his own creatures that are far beneath him. And so if Joseph was a good enough father for God Almighty and a good enough husband to the Immaculata, surely he's good enough for us as a patron. So, you know, I have nothing against other saints, but when people ask, you know, who my go-to is, it's always St. Joseph. And they say, well, what about St. Anthony and, you know, St. Uh, Therese and this and that? I'm like, those are amazing saints, but you can't top St. Joseph. You Like, no matter how hard you try, there's Our Lady and St. Joseph. They are like the top of the ladder. So why not just go for the best, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, well, that's actually how uh, our... Our parish priest today, Father Zacchaeus, he kicked off his homily with this question. He said, okay, who was the greatest saint? <laughs> and he asked a uh, one lady named Jennifer in the front row. And he quoted, um, you know, one of the sons of St. Jose Maria Escriva, who said, you know, it wasn't a bishop. It wasn't, you know, a great cardinal or a priest. It was a layman. Uh, you know, the humble carpenter, St. Joseph, is the greatest saint ever. Uh, now, of course, yeah, you, you don't count Mother Mary because, yeah, as you said, she's the Immaculata. I mean, she's number one. Uh, but St. Joseph is the number one male saint, of course. Uh, so he kicked it off that way. And, and yeah, you just, and as Father said in homily, I mean, he is the patron of the universal church. So he is, he is the number one greatest male saint ever, period. And the hierarchy of saints, I mean, you got God, you got Mama Mary, you got Papa Joseph, and then way down here, you know, you got, you know, the angels, and then you got like St. John the Baptist, and then, okay, I don't know who's next, but, you know, that's that's pretty much how it is, because popes have talked about this, you know, saint, or not saint, maybe not yet, Father Donald Calloway, in his wonderful book, you know, he quotes some popes uh, who say this, uh, because St. Joseph is the um second second guy proto dulia you know mama mary is hyper dulia joseph is proto dulia and the rest are just dulia <laughs> just the super saints you know